what's going on today. Any well, thank you very much, Scott. Steve, boy, what a day of days. You know, you sound like Elvis there. When you can't <laughs> He's trying to channel through me. Sorry. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, Steve, Scott. Hello, everybody in attendance. Thanks for taking the time to pop in. Hear what we have to say today on this Office Hours. Today is November 19th. The holidays are upon us. So before we get started here, of course, just have to take a moment uh, to make the lawyers happy. And just to let everyone know that uh, all the info that we share with you in this webinar, along with any other webinar that we host, is for educational purposes only. So if you do need investment advice, you know, when to buy, when to sell, all that good stuff, please seek out a registered investment advisor that can legally help you with that type of information and or advice. Okay, so for the new people in the room and for the regulars, uh, and I see all you guys out there giving us shout outs, uh, hello and welcome. Bear with us here while we uh, tell the new people what we've got going on as far as the community that we've uh, orchestrated around the award-winning and one-of-a-kind technology that is TI Pro with AI, of course. Um, upper left, it all kind of starts with Barry's trading room. Room just keeps getting bigger and bigger, four, five, six hundred people, depending on the day. Barry Anderson is the man. He is in there moderating, uh, showcasing his trades and the way that he uses trade ideas technology. Uh, does a great job at, uh, at, at being the monitor or the moderator, I should say, of that trading room. So one of the best things about the room, other than Mr. Barry, is that it's free, all right, no charge. All right. You don't even necessarily have to be a member of Trade Ideas to get in there and take advantage of the trading room. And if you've searched around the web, done your research on trading rooms, well, hmm, none of them out there are giving it away uh, like we are. So take advantage of that resource if you have not been doing that. Of course, today is Monday. You get me and my craziness along with Steve Gomez. Steve's going to take the helm tomorrow for the trade of the week on Tuesdays at the 5 p.m. slot. Andy Lindloff is going to ride shotgun with him. We'll change up in the middle of the week. Q&A demo with Brad and Dan. Dan, the CEO and founder. Brad, the chief technical officer. Uh, and in charge of the Skunk Works that is currently the Holly uh, Automated Execution Testing Nerve Center. And we're going to give you guys a little peek into that uh, here in a little bit. It's exciting stuff. Things are going along accordingly, as planned, as expected, we should say. Of course, Andy's going to round out the week for the 5 p.m. webinars, uh, Thursdays, Andy's Trading Studio, and I ride shotgun with him. Of course, on Friday, we like to change it up and just do a three-hour marathon, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, assuming there are participants. And, you know, I think we've been pretty much running the gambit there, maybe shut it down 15 minutes early last week. But uh, come one, come all with your TI-related questions on the Friday support session. In addition to that, uh, seems like just yesterday, but it's been quite a while since we launched the TI University. Uh, everything from Beginner 101 to Advanced 401, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. I just happened to teach the Advanced 401 course with the back testing. Uh, so a great place to start if you're new. Uh, we do recommend that you take these in order because what you learn in 101 will be necessary uh, to carry forward into 201, so forth and so on. So once again, you can sign up for all of these webinars at the bottom of our uh, homepage. Uh, you'll see the webinar tabs. So get scheduled for those guys. Uh, the sooner the better. And of course, AI, since we introduced it, 2016, Steve, 2016, boy, a lot changed at Trade Ideas in many ways. Um, forward, yeah. It is, it is. And one of the things other than Steve being added is when we added Holly, uh, probably shortly after this is when we added Andy and this started, you know, kind of beefing up the team as far as traders go. Uh, but long story short, people are responding to the AI uh, and we now have not one, not two, but three of them all acting as a cohesive unit all doing their, their things <clears throat> independently with their own personalities. And we'll look at how they just blew the doors off today uh, on, you know, <laughs> well, that, that that's all I'm going to say. We're going to look at how they blew the doors off today in just a minute. But obviously our user base is responding in a positive fashion and probably is uh, going to continue to do so 
with the enhancements and the auto trading that are coming down the developmental pipeline here. All right, Steve, boy, I can see your topics up here. So if you're ready to uh, illustrate my topics, let's see, rest in peace, Fang. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. And then who's going to say the B word? All mm -hmm. right, well, and here comes the tail into uh, that. All yeah. right, Red Rover, Red Rover. Well, let me grab that. All right, guys, we will start as usual with a big daily chart of the SPY, the S&P 500. Let me get my little crayon here. So recall, this is where the bulls lost control of the market back here. Um, last week, I had some discussions of the possibility of kind of one of those inverted head and shoulders. But today, I'm not so sure that this could be the case. This is where we were pivoting off of last week. Is, is this pullback and this choppy noise going to become uh, an inverted head and shoulders base that we can work off of and move back higher? Possible, but after today, I've got some thoughts, and I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case going forward. I think going forward, um, we're going to be under some continued pressure. I'd mentioned, well, first off, uh, I want to call your attention to the volume here. Very much different than the volume in the uh, high grind of the uptrend last year, for the most part. This is very significant. So, you know, this also in itself uh, shows me that this price action is very different from what we had over here. So, with that said, the fact that we made a lower high um, coming back here, and we cannot seem to figure out a way to reclaim and recapture these moving averages that we had, you know, for a couple of days back here. But this is the anatomy of a seller's market. I'm not going to call it a bear market yet. I've got some thoughts on that. But selling the highs, selling the rips, and then looking back in hindsight, and it becomes, well, lower highs create a downtrend. Lower highs create a bear market. And in hindsight, that's what we have. At the moment, we didn't really know uh, what we had, but um, I said it was very important that we stay above this 200-day moving average. We did for a couple days and then gave it back quickly. And then more importantly, the uh, the most recent action, as I look at it here, oops, let me go back to, a, there we go. As we fell back below the 200, we also lost uh, the 10 period that was turning back up. And that 10 period moving average has been a five-day lid on prices advancing any higher. So this is all looking um, and analyzing the S&P 500. What makes me think that this is probably not a inverse head and shoulders dip that's gonna turn back up and move higher is we look at the leading uh, index, which is the NASDAQ. Totally different story going on over here in NASDAQ land. And this is really, you know, the index that most for the most part led us higher uh, with the FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google. I'll get to those in a second. But you know, any any uh, hope of what the hell happened here? I need a bigger dot. Any hope of um, a inverted kind of a head and shoulders? You know, we were talking about that back here. We've really given it up. This 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 candle today is not helping anything. As a matter of fact, guys, I want to want to give you this. This back here, essentially was the lowest closing. That big red candle closed at that pink line. Sure, we traded below that day, but that's where we closed. Sure, we followed through a little bit to the next day, but we bounced back up and closed a little bit higher. So this line right here was really the lowest closing price that we had in the NASDAQ coming into today. So forget about all this stuff. Uh, we closed lower today, uh, posted a new close essentially, since we've had this massive volume volatility sell-off. I just don't see this resolving back to the upside, guys. It's going to be a miracle. It's going to be a stick save, a Hail Mary, if you will, because you know these gaps keep getting filled and they get blown through. This gap gets filled and it gets blown through. We're well below these moving averages, not even close to touching the tops of these candles. So with that said, the NASDAQ is not doing well, and I think that's going to bleed over into the health of the general market. Look at the, the Russell 2000. Again, this was a bounce that was meant to be faded. This is the kind of stuff we talk about in that ebook. When buy the dip no longer works, it becomes sell the rip. Sell the rip worked back here on this day. Sell the rip worked back here in IWM. And again, we're back closing on lows, back under all of these key moving averages. You know, we we stared it in the face, but the onslaught and and, and the headwinds just were too much. Um, not only that, we've got a crossover here of the 50 crossing over the 200 in the IWM. That's 
that's pretty ugly in itself. That's what they call the death cross. Uh, we have not seen that in the NASDAQ, but it's getting close. There's our margin of error right there for the old death cross. Let's take a look at the S&P. Uh, kind of the same in the S&P. And then lastly, the Dow, kind of a flattened, uh, not, real, not a real threat. But when we look at it, the NASDAQ, very close here. And then the IWM already did it. Remember, the IWM was really leading us lower. We talked a lot about this particular um, index back here starting to roll over as the other stuff was still holding up. And so with that thread, we still have the IWM essentially leading us lower. This was a, a, a balance that was yet to be sold or that was fit to be sold. And then as it is, there is our death cross. There's the 50 moving average crossing below the 200. That's um, a lot of people just laugh at it and, and poo poo it, but there's a lot of institutions that run a hell of a lot of money that don't necessarily poo poo this kind of stuff. So that's another bearish bad thing that's happening there. Couple things else, I made some notes here. Um, Jamie will, will back me up on this. We've got a seasonal market that typically, uh, when we're talking about the, the week of Thanksgiving and the week of Christmas, typically it seems like going back and you know, I'm not looking at the almanac, the trader's almanac, but just kind of querying my mind. I'm sure Jamie can relate to what I'm gonna say. These holiday weeks in the past on a seasonal basis have usually been quiet, quiet little grinds to the upside. You know, you get the, the volatility out in September, October, and then you get into the, the Santa Claus rally. That's what I'm talking about. I don't think a Santa Claus rally is coming um, because typically during these weeks, they're uh, just a low grind, higher stocks that are in favor become more in favor. Um, and it just is nothing like what we're seeing this year going into a holiday week of the things that I've seen last year. Yeah. So, Rip, <laughs> Santa, you know Claus went on a, Santa Claus went on a bender. He's not. You know what I'm talking about? Like those half uh, days. You're at home and it's a holiday. It's a half uh, day. It's like God, the stocks. Everybody's loved coming into this week. They love even more, and they just keep buying them, and it never stops. We're not even close to that kind of a market, and that's the seasonal kind of a market that we've seen, but we're not seeing that right now. That is right. That's for sure. So one of the other things I wanted to discuss um, was, you know, the Fang stocks: uh, Facebook, Amazon, um, Apple. And Netflix and Google. Now, what defines a bear market? Well, a bear market is essentially when you're down 20%. So when we look at the NASDAQ and the S&P, you know, S was the, down maybe 10, 12% down here. We're heading down again, perhaps. NASDAQ got over 12%, I think, and we're heading back. IWM also. Those aren't bear market territories. We got to get into the 20% territory before everybody starts raising the flag and saying we're in a bear market. But FANG stocks, that acronym was invented a few years ago to just accentuate the juggernaut of strength that are those particular stocks. Let's go through them. Facebook is down 40% since its all-time highs back here. Apple is now down 20% from its all-time highs. Amazon is down 20% from its all-time highs. Netflix is down 35% from its all-time highs. Google is down 20% from its all-time high. So when we look at the FANG stocks, those are in the throngs of a bear market. Now, are they going to lead the rest of the uh, the populace lower? It's possible. There's a lot of weighting that goes into our indexes based on these stocks. But looking at the tea leaves, so to speak, using the FANG acronym, those stocks are, are hideous. And I think Facebook's going even lower. They've got tremendous problems. They just broke a serious level of support today. So... Is somebody in the media going to say the, ba the B word, the bear market word? Well, the indexes are not in a bear market, guys, but um, the darling stocks on the way up are certainly in a bear market. So I'm just going to leave it at that. That's all I got. Good stuff, Steve. And uh, I was just responding to uh, an observation there by Winfield talking about how, you know, was the Q uh, volume light today? And, of course, I just responded, but it uh, looks like the Q's finished at 1.0 right on the dot as far as relative volume. That's a good point. I actually meant to kind of give it the old pro and con side, and I got too busy on the con side. But on the, on the constructive pro side, well, the volume wasn't there. But you talked to our friend Brian Shannon, and price pays, not, not the volume. So um, that is a good observation, Winfield. You're correct. And, of course, the big volume spike was on, the, uh, on that bottoming candle. Of course. Um, who and knows? That's one, and that's, I'm sorry. I mean, that's one of the reasons I was trying to highlight these, uh, the volume on the other side of the mountain here. This volume is very different from the volume we were used to once the market did, in fact, break. 
So with all that said down here in the underpinnings, I don't see this as a, a buy the dip market right now still. Yeah, and sometimes the big moves happen with big volume. You know, it's like like we talk about all the time. Volume is no guarantee of anything, but it nope. can act as a as a as a, a pro or a con depending on which side of the trade you're you're mm -hmm. in. Um, so having said that, let me grab this. And the funny observation too is our relative volume readings might be actually higher than the relative volume readings that they would have had two months ago because of the two months of history now that we have. Our relative volumes are the bar is set higher, so to speak. That is true. That is true. Um, all we, you know, basically, I can't say it's all we need to know, but hey, anything goes over these next couple of days. I mean, it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot of opportunity out there, um, no matter what. So, much uncertainty. Are we going to bottom out at this level again, or are we going to push through and set new lows and, and get into that bear territory that, that Steve was talking about? Um, you know, another thing that Steve hit on, the patterns from the ebook. And of course, we were pretty early on throwing that thing out there, but that was uh, on purpose because it gives people time to adjust and read up on those patterns. So, uh, assuming that was on we have. Purpose. Just we knew the market was going to go <laughs> another. Exactly. You know, and I mean, of course, we've been around, we've seen this cycle several times. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are new that have only seen uh, this, this bull market and no bear market. But very, very valid point there. People mm -hmm. have not experienced something that's not been around for a while. Exactly, exactly. But hey, the animals that are the trading patterns, they come out when it's conducive and boy, they're coming out big time now. Uh, so if we do have time at the end of the webinar, we'll we'll talk about some of the other simple range breaks that were just, I mean, you could have closed your eyes and, you know, picked a symbol and there was a good chance it was going to be displaying uh, that pattern. Now the timing is a different matter, um, but we'll see. Um, as far as, you know, what to expect after the first 15 minutes in my trusty compare count window today, nothing that blew the socks, blew my socks off as far as a bias goes, but we could see 52% to the downside, which is a bias, it's not a very big one, but knowing what kind of neighborhood that we're in and what to expect, eh, ended up uh, being a nice little uh, flick of grass into the wind, but just a subtle wind, nothing uh, gale force. Uh, even volume wasn't gale force today, but the move was pretty substantial. Uh, so, you know, uh, considering the neighborhood that we were in, no surprise to see that we had that uh, move down. Now, getting into the AI, the Zali. Boy, our cup runneth over today because what do we see Holly predominantly doing today once again? So, you know, we can start stacking these things together. Hey, you know, I had some negative compare count readings uh, to the downside. Nothing big. Let's see what Holly starts doing, right? Well, <clears throat> we can see here what her mentality was today. Lots and lots and lots of shorts. Matter of fact, on a performance-based per share, which I like to focus on here lately, you know, typically on a on a day where Holly just kind of kills it, right? Maybe get 23, 24 cents per share traded. But today we had 15.11 points on 34 signals, which equates to a door blowing. 44 cents per share on average. By far and away, the biggest average I can remember. Uh, you know, <laughs> if anybody remembers a bigger day, uh, please let me know. So, and I, I see some auto trade questions popping in there. I'll get to those in just a second. So what was Holly doing today? Well, she was shorting everything. Now, we did have a few longs trickle through on 2.0, Mighty Mouse spit out LLEX, which, hey, even stocks, <laughs> so there are some stocks that continue to go up, even in a down market. Um, and Holly found one of those today, an LLEX. Not a huge move, but uh, pretty nice on the percentage basis a little 9.7 percent are there on risk on to the close, but we can see predominantly um, a short bias today. And boy, <laughs> after seeing what we did here, and she was just weighted uh, just about as perfect as I've ever seen her. Now, interesting thing here, these monster 
point totals here on very respective trade count. Interesting to see our more aggressive of the trio, Holly Neo, risk on 6.47, approaching 6.5. Holly 2.0, risk off one the day for still a nice juicy total of 4.49. And the good old standby, talk about per share performance. And, you know, when I saw that 52% compare count reading today, I'm like, okay, Jamie, let's see if this holds up again. Let's see if, if, if the 1.0 outperforms. And sure enough, she did, right? Spits out four and, you know, has a great point tally to show for it. So once again, not any crystal ball that I have, but I've just seen this over and over and over again. And that's how we learn repetition, repetition, repetition. So let's take a peek at some of the risk on uh, that was produced by Holly Neo today. And I just sorted by my risk on column here. This one just looks classic and I can tell you what the chart's going to look like. So it was just like a lot of these. And how many times, ladies and gentlemen, have we seen this before? A nice entry signal from Holly. A nice little ebb and flow right around that entry line for a good one, two, for an hour. An hour after the signal before this one capitulated. But why did Holly get out? The good old reduced risk. And as we talk about ad nauseum here, five reasons. Other than stop loss, profit target, and timed hold, we give her audibles. She can get out early, reduce risk, or save profit. In this case, trade's not moving in the direction that it's supposed to since we're short here. Now, things to point out here, stop loss up here, did it ever even really make anybody nervous? Not really. Just a little flat lining here. And then Holly gets bored and goes, you know what? This thing's not working. I'm going to go ahead and clip out of it. Whereas, you know, once again, repetition. Maybe this is the 50th time you've heard me talk about this. Maybe it's the fourth. Maybe it's the first time that you're hearing me talk about it. If it is the first time, well, risk on. It's not something that you pick at the beginning of the day. It's something, in my opinion, is better addressed on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. So not killing us here, just not going yet. We see Holly getting out and we're like, okay, we can either go with her and risk off mode and take our 18 cent loser, but that's why we have hard stops. That's really what we're willing to risk if we're wrong on the trade. And we can override Holly and go, yeah, I see you're doing what you're programmed to do on the exit. I'm going to stay in. I'm going to keep my stop. Maybe I adjust my stop. Maybe I cut it in half. Whichever choice you make, that's deciding to go risk on, and we get a nice boom, 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 uh, total of you know 1.77, and then another 18 cents on top of that. That's a big spread, and that's the name of the game here is capturing some of that spread that develops between the risk off and risk on columns. Pretty much the same here. Peg A, what do we see? We see the same type of activity, right? Can't tell you, you know, how prevalent this pattern, along with some of the other patterns that we'll get to, uh, that were happening uh, in some of the other, you know, the range breaks and whatnot. It's just like, it really makes you think, well, is it just one big algo that's running all this stuff? Because all of these things look the same, call it the nature of the day. Um, market makers, ha, 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 uh, if there are any left, all thinking the same thing. I think not. So once again, we get the sideways action right above the entry line here, never really makes a run for the stop. What are we going to do? We're going to go risk on again right here and go, all right, we'll keep our stop. We'll tighten it up, cut it in half, whatever your risk tolerance uh, allows you to do there. And the sideways motion eventually breaks and we get a nice little crisp move down. Time and time again, we're going to see this today. All from different uh, uh, strategies also, by the way. Slippery slope, uh, we get a little push down in the beginning and we can see here she did clip out 50 cents on risk off, right? So good girl Holly right there. But once again, uncanny how these entry lines, they'll gravitate either, you know, we might have a move uh, in our, in our uh, going our way in the first and it gravitates back up. 
looks a little bit different than the other ones. Opportunity here, gravitation around the entry line before a final release uh, to finish the day pretty closely at lows here. So, you know, for those of you who've been watching Holly for one, two, three, four months, however long, you know, these tallies finish like this a lot of the time on risk on, you know. Uh, now, if you see us reporting Holly statistics, we will always report any studies about performance in risk off mode because, of course, it is the most conservative mode. Um, but risk on can really be a good teacher using this technique, and I would be remiss if I did not say the easiest way to get used to risk off, risk on, assuming you like the chart and assuming you think there's a little bit more meat left on the bone, easiest way to get used to this process is do half. Plug out a half with Holly. If you think the chart looks good, stick in the other half, set your stop loss on that one to a break even, keep your hard stop, whatever you feel is necessary. If you do set your stop to break even, you protect that first half of the trade, assuming you made money on it. All right, looks like Steve's answering those questions over there. Steve, if I do need to go into detail about anything. Well, maybe David's first question about the rush of everybody know. coming to Holly. Yeah, and this is a uh, this is a question that that's been surfacing one, two, three times a day here lately, it seems, or especially in the webinars. And you bring up a good point. You bring up a good point. What will happen when we do, uh, you know, make Holly? Uh, available for automation through Brokerage Plus towards the end of January of the new year. What will happen? Well, don't really know for sure, but you know, let's just sketch out a couple of scenarios here. Um, I've kind of coined a term, a way to describe it, and it's uh, my perception is that it's going to be a flash mob of quote unquote market making, right? All of a sudden, you're going to have all these entries circulating around this stock. Now, of course, nobody in their right mind, uh, well, I can't say that <laughs> because you never know how aggressive a trader is going to be with a system like this or you know, market the, order. the ability to automate it. However, you know, what's crazy to you is not crazy to me and vice versa. And I mean, you have a million different iterations on this topic. but one would think out of the mass that will be automating Holly plays, one would think that they're not going to all be market orders because that's not what a market maker does when, when he has to get rid of a lot of shares or buy a lot of shares. But of course, this is not your traditional, uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I do not know what's going to happen. Will we see huge spikes in these stocks? Will we see them just trade like normal? Now, having said that, let me pull my cheat sheet over here and make sure I'm not jumping the gun here. Um, but last week, this is the screenshot that I showed everybody from our live testing of Holly, right? This was last week. Now, Dan, our CEO, is having his turn in the development chair, right? So I don't know, Steve, what, can you make out these numbers here or is it too small? Uh, it's too small on your screen for the most part. Okay. Yeah, well, let me see. Bigger. How about that? That's better. Okay. So you can see a lot of these short positions or the majority of them, I mean, there's a couple on here that were added manually, which by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is the beautiful thing about brokerage plus. Not only can you automate, Whatever, what's that, Steve? A hybrid system. I was going to coin it before yes. you said it. Yes, yes. And, you know, is Holly going to be automatable at the end of January? More than likely, yes. Is anything that you make, can you automate that? Yes. Can you also trade manually through our interface? Yes. Okay, so in essence, this is a whole new platform. Of course, it's running through IB and executing through IB, but all the functionality that you see over here, is ours, right? I mean, they don't have the most friendly trader workstation over there. We love we we love you guys, IB. Not not saying we don't. Um, but you know, when you can just click on something and go flatten, click on something and go double, or hey, I think the top's in, cover me and reverse and go short via over here. Or you notice that all of these positions with the negative sign 
short positions, right? So imagine you're getting a push down, you think we might be bottoming out on the indexes, and you're like, okay, all my shorts, let's bid everything out uh, two cents below the last price that was printed, right? Um, the ability to throw out mass orders like that on all your shorts or all your longs is a beautiful thing. Um, but you will notice the majority of these are holly fills. I think Dan threw in some of his own uh, positions as well, uh, testing out that functionality. Uh, and so the interesting thing and what I was going to, how it related to the question about what's going to happen when everybody jumps in is I was taking some of these entry prices uh, earlier and comparing them to the price that Holly had. And of course, on some, you're going to have positive sl or negative slippage, which is, yeah, Holly said she got filled here. Of course, my fill was five cents worse. But then again, there were some with positive slippage. And you're thinking, well, how can that be? Well, we all know, Steve, stocks don't just go straight up or straight down a lot of the times. You'll get in and they'll wiggle against you. Boom, all of a sudden, you've got a better price than Holly. So there is such a thing as positive slippage because, you know, uh, let's just say 100 people were automating all in the same capacity. You might think that's a lot of orders, but compared to the market and the, the big boys, is it really? Is it really a lot of, you know, volume? It's all going to depend on the stock. You know, if it's a really thinly traded stock and everybody jumps on it, yeah, you might you might see some massive rips to the up and down side. And then, of course, were you participating? <laughs> did it get you long and did you get to participate in that? Or, you know, did you run a market order and take some huge slippage? Because, you know, part of the statistical uh, data set here is did you get everything right? If you're in everything, well, then the stats of you achieving something similar to what the AI is displaying are going to be a lot greater than if you're only in half of them or, you know, a quarter of them. But the bottom line is there's a lot of, you know, features, you know, hey, the AI was predominantly short today. That's great information to have considering the way things turned out. Um, but, you know, as Steve was saying earlier, this is not your average Thanksgiving week. You know, um, things are usually nice and calm, just like the summers used to be nice and calm. But the past two, three summers, things are changing in the market landscape and the market just doesn't care uh, that it's Thanksgiving right now. So what, what else was I going to talk about? OK. Da, 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 da. Did Dan leave his max P&L? Okay, so another thing to point out here too is what was maximum potential on all of these positions. Note the max P&L column. And by the way, this is also available uh, in the Holly columns right now is how much was the position up at the most in risk-off mode. So very good information to have here. Um, so I know I got a little off topic there about what's going to happen when everybody automates. Don't know. Might be unnoticeable might be very noticeable or you know what I'm kind of thinking is just it's going to be somewhere right in the middle all of a sudden if a really thinly traded stock gets on there you might notice some activity but if that's the case you know I'd much rather be automating that signal than trying to play it manually all right okay so 2.0 risk off mode so we're not going to see you know, we might see a little bit of risk on money here uh, because this one just hit its target and then kept on going. Uh, talk about a beautiful entry here, ladies and gentlemen. This is one that just went just off to the races, right? Uh, that target hit that target hit came after about, I don't know, what was the time that we were in the trade here? 11.04. That target hit came in about 20 minutes. Now, down, down, down. You know, when you see Holly closing this trade out <clears throat> and you've got these consecutive down candles, you're like, eh, you know, we might be getting down to this level and getting ready to break it. So, you know, feel it pertinent to stay in for a little uh, risk on activity. Now, this is a classic example. If you took half with Holly on a nice little gain there of, a, of, a, of that profit target getting hit, and then you kept the second half for some risk on potential, set your stop to break even, 
cash money, pay that man his money again, you know. And when you approach it from the 50-50 perspective, it simplifies things, right? Leonardo da Vinci, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. How many times have you heard people use the kiss analogy? Keep it simple, insert whatever you like there, silly, right? Um, but the bottom line is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, right? Make the call. If you like what, what's happening, you know, in a short, things are working, the market's tanking, Holly's got a short bias. Hey, it makes sense to try to get a little bit of that risk on, risk off spread because over time, believe you me, it will add up. Of course, not a whole lot more. You know, that was the anomaly out of this one because it won the day risk off. And then, of course, what we have affectionately started calling the old the old gray mare, the old gray nag, uh, Holly 1.0. WFC. Now, she pulled the plug early on this one. It says profit save, and she flatted it. By the time she pulled the trigger out, what little profit was there had eroded. And it's interesting to see what became of this one after. All right. Comes back up, stops her out, and always like to point out when you see Holly in a stop out situation, might be worth paying attention to, right? Um, one of the options that will be coming down the pipe is the second entry option. You know, uh, how many times would you like to try this one out? Well, on this one, let's say you were running that option, you would have got stopped out or you would have followed Holly's advice and flatted it. It comes back above the stop area and then, you know, acting as the pivot point that we've seen it do many, many times. And this, you know, has parallels between real world trading, humans trading, robots trading, um, just stops you up barely. Actually, I don't know if you saw the article that Dave May put out, Steve, um, showcasing this exact uh, stop out scenario, except his was long. Uh, talking about how, you know, how many times has this happened to you and how actually it's a good thing because if it wasn't happening, then you know that things are going kind of crazy on the statistical side. So, you know, any of you out there that want to read that article, I highly encourage it. Just look up Dave Mabe. Uh, he's one of our coders here on Twitter, uh, and you can find that article on Medium. So what do we have here? As Steve would like to say, once it passes back through here, Second mouse gets the cheese, not only if you use the stop as an entry, um, but also through the second push of the entry line here. And, you know, a little bit of a wiggle and then back down to lows. So as you move forward, as you engage with Holly, of course, automation is not available right now. So when you get your little busy portion, the first one, two hours of the day over with, or maybe it's sooner than that, you just start scanning the blotters and looking for the stop outs and going, hmm, this one looks interesting. It's below the stop or above the stop in the case of a short. Maybe I'll use that as an entry. And it happens all the time. That's why we show you risk on, to show you what eventually happened with the stock. Yes, David. Dave Mabe is a recommended follow on Twitter. He's getting more into it. He's posting a lot more content these days. I guess he's uh, yes. enjoying it now. You know? I dubbed and, him. I'm sorry. And, I dubbed him the data whisperer the other day because that's kind of what he I is. know. I know. And uh, he just lays it down. He doesn't care if he hurts anybody's feelings because, well, he's pragmatic. He pays attention to statistics and uh, good stuff. So check out Dave on Twitter. All right. So couple more examples here and then I do want to save just a little time for the bread and butter type plays from uh, the ebook uh, let's see here why is my stop not showing up let me squish it up a little bit uh, like miles and miles up here so once again a beautiful play um, Holly plugs out for her 50 cents we get a little gravitation back up to the entry line meanders along I could point out several different things about these setups as they progress, but you know, once they consolidate, which this was the song of the day, once we had our initial move, lots of flagging. Um, also, depending on how aggressive you are, once these little ranges are established, you know, not a whole lot more meat left on the bone here, but always a good time to tack on to a position to get that last little 
push um, before the, the bounce or the continuation here. Um, so once again, use that old 50-50 rule. Once we see the uh, Holly plugging out, you could have easily plugged out, set the stop. Uh, well, you know, at that point in time, we're in real time, so we would have had to reference a little bit, either keep the hard stop or say, you know what, on the second lot, I'll keep it right about here, uh, whatever you're comfortable with, so that in the end, you, what you don't want left, if it goes against you on that risk on portion, is a losing trade. Hopefully you want to protect that first lot or at the worst case, uh, have the old flat ski there. So let's look at one more here, putting on the brakes. I, do, I really do like how, you know, a lot of, you know, we're not just seeing all the good short trades come from one strategy today. Um, more of the same song and dance, push down back to the signal line again. And, you know, if we drew it up right here, said, okay, we're in it, we're in the money, we're going to do 50-50 line it up here, range break towards the end of the day, boom, a great time to leverage these positions. Well, Cody, um, you don't need to be an expert uh, to absorb this information and make use of it. It might seem a little overwhelming at first if you're just hearing it for the first time, or this might be the second or third webinar uh, that you're attending, but uh, repetition, 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 familiarizing yourself with the statistical model, which let me say that about Holly. What's Holly's real superpower here? What makes Holly Holly? These strategies that she brings to us every day, the statistical weight that's behind all of them, right? A lot of the times we can exit better than her, and that's why we're talking about risk on and how to go about that process. But Holly's superpower is the, or superpowers are the ability to lift massive sets of data, do all the optimization, the back testing for us. So keep in mind, you know, here we are looking at Holly Neo. If we looked at Holly 1.0, one, two, three, four, five strategies out of a core of about 35. That's all that made it for today's session based on the analysis uh, with the update and the close of Friday, right? Uh, only four trades spit out between, once again, Let's see, 34 signals. Remember, almost 8,000 stocks out there to pick from. A lot of people would look at the day-to-day -day and go, ah, eh, all you had to do was short something. Well, we all know that that's it's never that easy. You know, when the market was grinding up, you didn't just have to buy something and you automatically make money, all right? If it were that easy, nobody would be sitting here uh, listening to myself or Steve today. So... 34 signals out of a potential of anywhere between 75, 76, 7, 7,700. All that are statistically weighted, right? So all we have to do is pay attention and, you know, get familiar with, you know, some of the basics of chart reading. You know, we don't have to be technical experts um, to follow along with Holly and participate in the risk on, risk off mode. All right. You know, David so, brought up a good question, and we should probably let everybody know because it's very pertinent. The sure. question was on Dan's screenshot today, what was his per-trade stop-loss risk? Uh, yeah, let me pull that back over here. Bear with me. Uh, go to meetings being a hog here. Yeah, okay. So this is just my paint that I pulled over. Um, all of this, this entire blotter, the stop-loss, on all of the Holly entries was a $34 uh, risk-based stop. So then it would adjust for the shares accordingly, right? The beauty of the risk-based stop, 34 US fiat dollars. <laughs> all right, moving right along here uh, before we run out of time. Where did you go? Okay, so we're gonna talk about the bread and butter tickers. You know, Andy and I are kind of similar on this. We like the high volume things hitting lows on the on the down days, high volume uh, stocks uh, hitting highs on the long days. But boy, I mean, this thing was just shooting them out left and right. Of course, what do we have here in Turbo Breaks Down? Well, we've got a high quality information stream. This one's only looking at the big boys too, by the way. Market cap of four billion or more, with that accelerated one-minute volume. Uh, Andy's got the high pro, 
Hilo Pro, which is looking at one minute, and I think he's coupling the five minute. Maybe he's a couple other. Um, I don't know if he's got any relative volume in there off the top of my head or not, but kissing cousins, we could say. Now, this thing was very active with a lot of repeats because that new low can repeat, but it's all about, you guessed it, timing. Everything, not just trading, is about timing. So let's take a look at some of the ones that if you were patient enough, you would have had opportunities to act on these. And they're going to be right out of that ebook that myself, Steve, Andy, and Sean uh, put together. My little section is on range breaks. Once again, why do I like them? Well, for the simplicity, right? You don't have to be a technical guru to see what happened here in shop and see where the break occurred, all right? So I just pulled this one out from Turbo Breaks today as well. We had the signal coming right here as the low was penetrated, <clears throat> nice and clean. These are 15 minute candles. So our risk would be the prior high of the, or the high of the prior 15 minute candle. We've got a nice little risk area up here. And let's see, uh, entry level right here, my line got, pushed out of whack here. So this is our risk area right here, and this ended up being our reward area. Reward area, uh, a considerable amount larger than the risk area, and that's exactly what you want. So number one, you've got simplicity. You know where your stop's going to be, and we get a multiple on the return here. Now, this is the timing right here. If we weren't paying attention, and then we looked over and we saw a shop hitting lows, that's too late, baby. Trains left the station. Now you can chase, but I think even the less experienced trader out there probably has a taste of what chasing chasing will get you um, over time, and it's not good. Okay, so timing is crucial. So excellent, excellent little uh, textbook play out of shop. Uh, what do we have? We had one out of, and the and there was a lot more than these, ladies and gentlemen, too. Um, I just want to give you guys some illustrations here. Once again, what do we have? We got the downside action. We got the wick. Then we have the sideways action. And we get the penetration. Too bad that wick kind of spoiled the party there. It would have been a lot sweeter if this was the signal. And while I'm on this topic, it depends on the type of trader that you are. A lot of people care about candle bodies. If you're a purist, you have to use that wick as the low. And of course, since our software is a purist, it has to actually be a low, uh, then you would not have gotten the alert here. But a lot of times people will put these on their radar. Hey, if they've got four consecutive down candles or four up or three after the first 15 minutes, then they're going to go and go into a top list. Then we're going to start looking at them as time progresses. If you're embracing that type of, of uh, scanning technique, well, then you would have seen it going sideways here. Uh, especially if you're looking at smaller time frames. So keep that in mind. Uh, good old Shapigi. I've traded this stock so many times in the past. Um, in the old days, we used to call it Shapigi. Other people called it something a little bit more obscene, but I'll just call it Shapigi. So Shapigi, in keeping with tradition, you know, nice wiki candles, but the pattern is the same, just a little bit more stretched out, but the risk to reward area holds up. We got this range here. We got a range break right here. Anywhere in that candle, there's a little bit wick there, but anywhere in that candle would have been a great fill using prior 15 minute high as the stop. And what do we get? We get downward momentum. So just pick, you know, then it just becomes a about, okay, I'm gonna get here and let some ride. Maybe you take it all, maybe you let some ride. Going risk on is the same here as if you were going risk on with Holly. Hold some, get rid of some, whatever floats your boat. Of course, NVIDIA, under pressure, once again, doesn't get any more, you know, obvious here. Purest wick right here, we get the penetration and the march lower. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Get to be friends with this pattern. They're there every day. It just becomes about the timing. Once again, if you're eating a sandwich or talking on the phone here and you see it hitting a low here, that's chasing. Chasing is no good. If you can be disciplined enough to only pick the quality and only shoot the animal when it's the animal that shows up, 
instead of just shooting another animal out of boredom, that's that's the road to ruin. Okay, that will not serve the purpose. So create your high quality information stream. While we're on this topic, don't expect everyone to be perfect. That's where the trading aspect comes in. APO, another gorgeous one, right? Meandering sideways, didn't even have any consecutive bars, but doesn't really matter. Meandering sideways, this range is broken to the downside. Even at the bottom of that wick would have been just fine. Risk is right up here. And boom, tiny, tiny risk on APO today. Big, big, big reward area. So <clears throat> if you have not downloaded that ebook, I think we've got a slide here and it'll show you the address um, as Scott walks us out here. But get familiar with this pattern. Get familiar with Steve and Sean and Andy's patterns, the sell, the rips, the range breaks, because now's the time, all right? Chance favors the prepared mind. So having said that, looks like we're just about at the end here. So Scott, if you're ready to show us the door, let me get my stack back up here and we can do that. And I just want to thank everybody for popping in here. All right, yeah, thank you. So a couple items on the way out today. Um, we're, we've begun selling the Brokerage Plus reservations. So uh, get your deposit in. Uh, we're going to do the, release the first wave in January and then add AI late, and it's probably late January. There's only gonna be a thousand spaces for this first wave. So make sure that if you're interested, you get in it. Go find out details at trade-ideas.com slash brokerage plus. Uh, we've got a bunch of great content from the event that we held in October, so you can absorb all of it, all the great speakers, at trade-ideas.com slash summit video 2018. Uh, so take advantage of that. There's some really great speakers and <clears throat> really great speakers and panels. Do check it out. There's an ebook, both Jamie and Steve contributed chapters. Uh, go to trade-ideas.com slash ebook. Make sure you get that. Five strategies to win in a post-BTFD market, which this year has certainly become. Um, so we launched this in February, and it's been very timely for this year. Uh, we have a podcast. There's an easy way to find it. Just search for Trade Ideas Podcast in whatever application you listen to your podcasts in, and you should find it and be able to subscribe. And then that'll get you the newest episode and the next episode as soon as it comes out. You can also look through the archives and find some guest spots. We just had a... Had a a guest spot last week with a uh, interesting engineer who is a Trade Ideas uh, uh, subscriber and became a referral partner. He's been quite successful. Sean McLaughlin interviews him. So do check out that interview. It's a good one. Uh, we've got a promo code for you to use this month, and you can use Holly Giving, all caps, like you see it on your screen, 15% off your first month or year of Trade Ideas. Those of you that are on standard can also use that to upgrade. So do that if you want to get access to Holly, the AI, and all the other goodies. Any questions, shoot us an email to info at trade-ideas.com. And uh, you can follow Jamie on Twitter at QuantBot, Steve Gomez at Today Trader on Twitter. Our Facebook page is Trade Ideas Pro. And again, any questions, shoot it to info at trade-ideas.com. Uh, we'll have a recording up later on tonight or tomorrow, so stay tuned for that. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, thank you, Scott. And just uh, last minute there, David had a question. What was the $100 sign on for? Um, that's if you want to reserve your copy of Brokerage Plus, David. We're only going to allow 1,000 of them. So it's the first 1,000 to put down their $100 deposit. We'll get that. All right, Steve. Thanks for riding shotgun. And thanks everyone for attending. Bye-bye.